Army. Tonight, during a very busy time at the end of the semester, I know each of you are preparing for final reviews, which occurs next week. So, again, thanks for taking the time to come and hear our presentation today. Um, you, I'm sure, have seen the posters that have been up in our college, Mario Shetnan's work in this, um, again, change initially with the lecture from Monday to Wednesday night, but this is part of the exhibit that's also currently on, which is in the gallery. So hopefully after the lecture, you'll continue to familiarize yourself with some of the work that uh, Mario and his firm are a part of, as well as some of his colleagues. Um, in addition, tonight, after the lecture, as usual, we'll have the post-lecture reception. This night, it's sponsored jointly by the ASLA, that's the student chapter of uh, the Society of Landscape Architecture, and the AIAS, which is the student chapter of the American Institute of Architects. In addition, we will have some copies of this book, really quite elegantly um, prepared and photographs that are quite exquisite that relate to, of course, the exhibit out here. So this will be on, on sale for $20 after the lecture, and um, I imagine that Mario will be so kind as to sign that for anyone who has the purchased the copy. So tonight, to introduce our speaker, I'd like to introduce Assistant Professor in Landscape Architecture, Elisa Coffin. Thank you. Um, it's been a great pleasure for me to host our visitor in his, in his visit uh, to Ball State University over uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Um, Mario Shetnan is a founding partner, together with Jose Luis Perez, of Grupo de Diseño Urbano, GDU, a firm established in 1977 in Mexico City with work in landscape architecture, architecture, and urban design. The work of GDU has been recognized by the American Society of Landscape Architects with the President's Award of Excellence for Parque Tesosomoc, an honor award for Parque Histórico Culhuacán, and a merit award for Parque Ecológico Xochimilco. Those last two projects are in the gallery on the walls, all of them in Mexico City. Um, Bruce Sharkey at Landscape Architecture Magazine uh, recently wrote, uh, conceptually, Mario's work is not just about aesthetics. A lot of what he does is drawing from a very rich past and has to do with improving the social well-being of his people. The work of GDU has been published in design magazines and books in various countries of Europe, Japan, Latin America, and the US. In 1992, the firm was distinguished with the International Critics Award in Architecture at the Bienal of Buenos Aires, Argentina, for the Centro Cultural Mexiquense in Toluca, Mexico, a cultural complex with museums of arts and crafts and modern art. In 1995, Shetnan and GDU won the Latin American Grand Prix of Architecture at the Bienal of Buenos Aires, Argentina, by just, uh, for an archaeological museum built in Paquimé, Chihuahua, Mexico. In 1996, Parque Ecológico Xochimilco was recognized with the Distinguished Prince of Wales Green Prize in Urban Design, given by Harvard University's Graduate School of Design. He is a founding member and ex-president of the Mexican Society of Landscape Architects, fellow of the National Academy of Architecture in Mexico, fellow of the American Society of Landscape Architects, and in 1994 was a visiting design critic at the Graduate School of Design at Harvard University. It is a great honor for us to have architect Shetnan here tonight with us, and I hope you'll uh, join me in welcoming him here tonight. Thank you.
Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, good evening. Uh, it is a uh, pleasure and an honor here to be here at uh, Ball State University. I thank you very much for the, the invitation and the distinction of uh, 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 coming to talk to you on our work of Grupo de Diseño Urbano, our office, which uh, is uh, last year was 20, 20 years old, together with my partner, Jose Luis Perez. Uh, I also want to apologize for having changed the, the date of the original date of the lecture, which was supposed to be uh, last Monday, but you were kind enough to, to allow me to change it. Uh, um, what I want to show you tonight is some of, of the work we have done in Grupo de Diseño Urbano, uh, an office uh, established in Mexico City uh, in the last uh, 20 years where we have done work in the area of urban design, architecture, and landscape architecture. Uh, there are several issues that we are interested in in our work. Uh, and I would like to, to tell them to you and to try to communicate them to you. Um, one is the issue of, uh, we are very much interested in, in our work in terms of integrality. By integrality, we mean uh, establishing bridges, establishing connections between the disciplines of design in terms of architecture, landscape architecture, and urban design. Many times our work start as urban designers and we end up doing uh, 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 landscape architecture or, or sometimes we are asked to do a building and we uh, conceive that building as a piece of the landscape. Uh, uh, we have had, we say in our, in our office, we say uh, that every piece of architecture is landscape because it is in the landscape. And every piece of landscape we design, we conceive it as architecture because it is a built project. Uh, it doesn't mean that architecture, does it mean that then that architecture, urban design, and, and landscape can be done by anybody and can be done by any, anyone else? It, it's, and I don't think so. There are, there are uh, uh, precise distinctions between these disciplines in terms of uh, methodology, technical aspects, and uh, um, uh, uh, crafts, crafts in itself as, as professions. But I think the similarities are in terms of a view of creating place and of uh, 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 establishing and manipulating space. The second um, issue that we are interested in our office is uh, the specificity of place. By that, we really mean that we like to look at a place from a very uh, uh, thorough way, not only from the environmental point of view, for, but from the phenom phenomenological point of view. That is, what is the essence of place? What is the nature of this place? Uh, be it a place in uh, some parts of Mexico, uh, Mexico being a very diverse and complex country of many, many, uh, like a big mosaic of subcultures, but also uh, uh, conceiving a place if we're doing a building or a landscape in Argentina, Chile, uh, and so on, which are quite different distinctions between those places. So we look at the specificity of place from this point of view of the um, conditions of, of naturalness that the place has and its environmental factors, and also from its phenomenological point of view, from its poetic point of view, that is from a, a place which may be very different in the afternoon, may, may be different when the wind blows, may be, may be very different uh, when it's rainy, or when it's foggy, or when it's sunshine. Uh, the third uh, uh, factor or um, quality that we are trying to look for in our work is looking at myth 
memory and culture. By this, we, we uh, uh, think that by living in Mexico and by establishing our, our roots re related to Mexico, we have uh, become uh, involved and immersed with history and, and, with, and with culture and with myth. But we have, been, we have looked at history not from a, a view of trans, translating his history in, in a very uh, facile or, or um, a copying history, because that can take us very easily to mockery, to, to, uh, um, uh, to copying it, to, to, uh, to uh, um, uh, caricature, mockery, or pastiche. Um, uh, we, we, we like to look at history from, from a creative point of view. And, and we, we look at history uh, as the Mexican and Latin American uh, literature writers have looked at it in an incredibly creative way, uh, uh, interpreting history and elaborating history. Uh, uh, all of this uh, uh, view of literature has been uh, taken from uh, a philosopher of the 18th century called Gian Battista Vico, which, which uh, wrote a book called The New Science. And that uh, uh, Vico was telling us that uh, history is the creation of man. So we look back, for instance, at Bernal Diaz del Castillo, the man who wrote the, 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 the novel, the history of the conquest of Mexico in the 16th century. But actually, Bernal Diaz del Castillo wrote this book 50 years after the conquest. So uh, this is the only kind of uh, 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 related uh, relation that we have of the conquest, and if you write it 50 years later, is it history or is it an invention? Is it elaboration or is it creation? And that's the way we like to look at history, is by establishing or inventing history, interpreting it, and, uh, and, and creating on it. The, the fourth uh, uh, quality that we like to look in our work is related with uh, uh, evolution and permanence. By evolution and permanence is we like to look uh, at uh, our work to, to be uh, as, as possibly uh, um, related with permanence and with uh, um, uh, te a temporality. By, by a temporality, I mean uh, the, the kind, not, not the last minute vanguard or the 15 minute uh, fashion, which is so in much in vogue in certain circles of architecture or landscape. But we like to look at it from the point of view of those eternal qualities of permanence and uh, uh, presence that. Uh, the work of Louis Kahn or Luis Barragan has in much of his work. Um, we also like to look at our work from the point of view of its spiritual quality. And by this I mean that we look at our work as creations of art. Uh, sometimes we, we don't, we don't uh, uh, accomplish it, but we uh, strive for it, we look for it. In, in order to have uh, uh, our work become uh, and, and, and uh, communicate the, this spirituality that art can evoke, evoke in, in man and in women, in women. And finally, we look at our work in relation to nature, but uh, we look at our work in relation to nature from the aspect or from the point of view of creating with nature, not 
replicating nature or recreating nature. We, we would like to see our work very much immersed and evolved of, from nature and reestablishing nature, but also with a high degree of creativity with nature. So uh, I would like to show you some of the work that we have done in the last more or less 10 to 15 years in our office. I will show you some projects first of landscape architecture and uh, uh, then a few projects of urban design and then of, of uh, architecture at the end. Oh, again, buttons. There. Well, this park, we, we, we designed this park in Mexico City in 1978 and finished it in 1982. Um, uh, this, this park was in a very uh, poor district of Mexico City and an industrial district, as, as you can see. Uh, uh, when, we, when they asked us to design this park, they wanted us to do a museum in this part of the city. So we went and looked at those buildings and they said, listen, to build a museum here, there are many museums of archaeology in Mexico City, and uh, 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 it's very costly. Why don't we uh, do the park to be the museum itself? We found out also by doing research in this area of the city, which is uh, one million people in, in this whole area of the city, northeast, northwest section of Mexico City, and uh, we found out that there were many, many immigrants into this part of the city. That the immigrants didn't have a knowledge of place, a history of place, and they really didn't know what this place was all about. So what we did was to do this first little scheme that you see there, and we found out that the most uh, interesting and, and a, a quiet place was in that dark orange area in the middle of the park. So we wanted to create a place where you would come into, this, into the park and uh, dissolve the city around because it is a very kind of ugly and uh, actually quite alienating city, a, a part of the city. It's a kind of a very dull, very, very strong, kind of a, a alienating part of the city. We worked here in this project with a poet and a historian called Tomás Calvillo, and he made a very beautiful poem uh, when we started to work on this project, and he said something like this, uh, uh, without quoting the poem. He said, we, let's, let's create a lie, because reality is so alienating that we cannot accept it. So we have to create a, an introduction to paradise. We have to dissolve the city and create an introduction to paradise. So we, what we did here was to take the model of Mexico City as it was in the 15th century during the conquest of the Spaniards, and uh, we uh, also If I can get this pointer out, let me see. Yes. Please. Um, and and uh, you see here on the, on the left-hand side, this, this is a scheme taken from the Valley of Mexico as it was in the 15th century with its five lakes and Tenochtitlan in the center. And um, it's <laughs> quite difficult. <laughs> and, there we go. Thank you. And, and, uh, no. So, subtle. There we go. Yes. So this is, tenos, you know, this is the whole complex of lakes of the Valley of Mexico. And we replicated it in plan here in the center of the park. And, and as you see, we created an island here, which was supposed to be the center of Mexico City. And then we created a series of 
uh, places to explain the history and the evolution of the Valley of Mexico as it was from the 15th century into uh, present day time. Uh, we explain all of the meaning of all of these towns, the meaning of its uh, 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 terms, of its uh, 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 name, name giving, uh, and uh, uh, toponymia, and its, uh, its, its revolution, its myth, and so on. We also created a park which uh, would be uh, at, at the beginning, in the entrance, a very simple axis to a central uh, round circus here, and then to become like a, like a traditional park, a baroque park, and then to dissolve yourself into a series of valleys, and then come out and discover the, uh, quote, paradise. And then, uh, uh, well, we had the problem of actually building this, this, uh, this enormous model, uh, replicating the topography. So what we did is we found out that there was the construction of the metro line system nearby the park, and we uh, uh, convinced the authorities to deposit all of the, all of the field that was taken from the excavation of the metro into the park to create the mountains of the park. So actually, uh, the, the city was collecting money from the constructors to deposit the, 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 the field here. So the park made money in the beginning of the construction. And, and, and uh, uh, you can see here, I'm here, uh, located here, to give you a, 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 a scale of the movement of dirt and soil and so on. And then we had the supervision of people to, so we didn't have concrete or rubble or something like that. The park as it looks today uh, from an aerial view, you can see that it's established and the lake here, uh, again, the lake in the form of the, of the Valley of Mexico as it was in the 16th century with Tenochtitlan here and a series of, you can see little plazas uh, and obelisks which have this, this historical con connotation to it. The, the water for the park was also a, a second problem. Mexico City has a very big problem of water. We said, why do we want to take the water? So we uh, uh, fixed up a, uh, a water treatment plant of a nearby housing project and we uh, uh, connected it to the, to the park. So the park actually gets uh, recycled water and uh, tertiary treated water and then from this the park then irrigates the, 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 the whole uh, green areas, let's say, of the park. This has produced a, a very healthy park, and over the years, now the park is about 14, 15 years old, and as you can see, this, the, the forestry and all the spaces have been established now by now. Uh, going into the park, you can see here the main axis, into the center of, of this, this circle uh, and then um, you dissolve yourself into this forestry, these mounds and into the park itself. Uh, as you come here you, you find this building and uh, uh, the building is kind is, is, is a, uh, we try to do it as an opposition to the naturalness and to the the topographic organic part of the park. It's, you can see it's a very kind of Corbusian rationalist building uh, st st uh, 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 standing uh, separated from the ground on, on stilts in a very uh, Corbusian kind of way, let's say. Then you come, suddenly come up and turn around and you see the park. And uh, it's a quite a nice surprise to have this in the middle of an industrial area of Mexico City and to have uh, these pieces of recreations, let's say, back into history, back into what was originally the Valley of Mexico as a lake. Uh, 
Uh, the park also is a place, it's a very much place for people. Uh, something like 20 organized groups have emerged out of this park in all kinds of uh, organizations, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, whatever, you, you name it. And also it's a park of tranquility. You know, it's a park, it's a park for love, it's a park for lovers. And, and, and I, I love that because it, it means that it's a safe park and also it is a very uh, uh, private and intimate park. <laughs> and again, it's a, it's, a cultural, it's a cultural place, as I was telling you, these are the obelisks that tell the, the history. These are three-sided obelisks which on one side tell the history, on another the myths, in another one the location and the evolution of the lake. And you see here, inadvertently, these people are looking at the obelisks and therefore they are uh, uh, reading this history of the Valley of Mexico. Uh, in, in the center, uh, you can find, uh, well, the, the, uh, the original sculpture, which is in the Zócalo of Mexico, the downtown plaza of Mexico, with the evocation of the founding of the city. And you see here the relation of the myth with the sculpture, a copy of the sculpture of uh, uh, Olaguibel, a, a Mexican sculpture, in relation to the myth of the founding of, of, of Mexico City. Uh, uh, well, our second project in Mexico City uh, was a, a, a very small project. It's a project of one hectare, that's about uh, four or five acres, uh, in, in exactly the opposite direction, in the south. Now we're in the southeast part of Mexico City. In this park, we uh, were invited by the National Institute of Anthropology of Mexico, which is like your National Endowment for the Arts or your historical uh, anthropological institute of Mexico uh, uh, and they asked us to participate in this land which apparently was excavated by chance and they found out that maybe it had been something like this a, um, a pre-Hispanic port or marina into a, a, a very interesting aquatic space and into these uh, 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 stairs and up to, the, to this pyramid. So we started to work with archaeologists and historians and we captured the essence of this, uh, this again we recovered the essence of this uh, water body or the space between the walls. As you can see these are the walls, the, the stairs and then back to a 16th century monastery which now works as a uh, cultural center for the community. Uh, uh, you can see also that uh, we also worked with, with the archaeologists recovering uh, this centerpiece here which was a, uh, a st spring and then we also wanted to create a series of outdoor rooms to uh, have uh, people come out from the, the, the cultural center, former monastery, uh, out to have outdoor classes, outdoor groups of classes, or even an outdoor auditorium. We also had, uh, well, views of access to the, to the pilgrim's entrance, to the cupola, and so on and so forth. In this uh, second instance, we didn't then invent uh, history as we had to do it in the first in the first uh, uh, park in this park we had to exhume uh, and then recover part of history and then explain it and interpret it in a very uh, in a contemporary uh, manner but relating it to its contextual historical uh, uh, environment which is the, the monastery in the back Uh, then we had this, uh, uh, like I say, these outdoor rooms 
which uh, uh, were signified or, or, or uh, established with these uh, textures in stone. You can see this is the same type of stone in the, 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 the walls or the benches or the pavement or the different types of pavement. And very simple types of landscape uh, uh, assemblages, assemblages or compositions uh, around the walls. Uh, here we, we, we carved down the, 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 the auditorium, the little outdoor theater, uh, uh, having, uh, uh, taking advantage of the uh, retaining walls and of the, uh, 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 as a backstage from the monastery, from this, this, this uh, the walls uh, in stone. You can see here again the series of treatments related to the pavement and the spaces and also to the water body in the middle. Again, a series of outdoor rooms. And we also uh, worked uh, uh, recovering parts of old buildings of Mexico City. There was a, there was a, uh, a place to guard this, to, to, to save it, and we were uh, given a chance to recover many of these stones and then use them as benches or as retaining walls for the park. And again, this is another very poor district of Mexico City. And this park works as a very interesting community center and as a very interesting community area and uh, as a important gathering place. You can see here, for instance, uh, uh, this place was used as a stage in the middle of the water to hold theater at night, to hold uh, folkloric dances, and so on. Or we can then uh, have, have uh, this uh, very interesting and very funny uh, legends around uh, the park, uh, explaining the myths, explaining the legends uh, the, from the park. For instance, this, is, this, is, this one says, according to local tradition, here is where the siren of Kulakan, protector of the washers of cloth, lavanderas, used to come to find the Charro Negro, the black cowboy uh, from Churubusco, which came to take them in the whirlwind and to, to, have, to make love to them. You know, to, to, so there was this, this kind of very interesting myth, legend around, around the, the, the washing of clothes, the, the lake, and so on. El Charro Negro. Okay, this, this third part of this third tri tri trilogy we have with, with, with the Valley of Mexico is uh, in Xochimilco, the last project we have finished in Mexico City. Uh, Xochimilco, as you must know, is a, a remnant of what existed in the Valley of Mexico, uh, and it's the last remnant of this lacustrian culture, which uh, created a, a form of agriculture, a production form, which created a specific architecture a, spe a specific culture of transportation and a specific culture of construction in, in downtown Mexico City as it was in, before the, the Spaniards came. So the last uh, remnant of Xochimilco is this. You can see still here, look at the, at the uh, codexes and which relate to this, to this culture, for instance, these people uh, 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 in, their, in their canoes, you know, uh, people who are washing themselves or, or hunting or creating myths and so on, until to the present day where uh, you find uh, the, the, the mountains, the lake, and the famous uh, agricultural islands called Chinampas, which is uh, probably the most important uh, invention, technological invention, of the pre-Hispanic era. But uh, uh, also, this, um, this became a certain myth, because 
This, for instance, this, this slide, I, I, I bought it in a typical tourist store of Mexico City. But the reality is this. The reality by the 1980s was that the place was degrading itself and being invaded by squatter settlements at the, at the rate of three or 400 hectares per year. And for instance, these were canals three or four years before. And this was a, a, a natural landscape. Well, not natural, I mean, but agricultural landscape like this before. By this time also, due to the lack, due to the extraction of water for the, Mexi for the city of Mexico, uh, you can see where the level of water was and where actually the level of water went down by the 1980s. And so this place was in the, on the verge of destruction and abolition by the, the late 80s. And it was declared a, a world inherited site together with downtown Mexico City by UNESCO in 1988. And there, uh, from there on, a plan was created to restore a uh, part of it. Uh, you see, this is the Valley of Mexico. All of it, what it's all in brown, is the, the metropolitan area. Today, encompassing about 15 million people. The only remnant of this Lacustrian culture is this, this, and that. This one, this space here, is, is all of this. Okay? This space is Xochimilco, which is, which is uh, uh, this last 3,000 hectares, about 800, no, 8,000 acres of, uh, of, of, uh, of land, together with a canal system, which is, dates back to the ninth century, this construction of canals and uh, a agricultural islands dates, dates back to the ninth and 10th century. And uh, uh, so the idea was to protect all of the historical part with a series of retention lagoons, flood control lagoons, and a major park over here, which is what we were asked to do, to design this park of uh, about 300 hectares. That, that's about 700 acres, or about 10% of all the area of the... Of the. Around, uh, around the, the, uh, the, the, the historical Chinampas, or agricultural islands, other areas were protected, like, uh, for instance, a uh, nursery for the city was created, city here, and also uh, 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 they, they gave land to uh, rowing clubs uh, to protect uh, from the expansion of the city, to protect this area from the expansion of the city. So, in, in reality, the park is, is a, a, an important feature, but it's also a cushion, uh, a transition from urban development to the historical era part. So, uh, in this third case, uh, Xochimilco for us was encountering not only in our first park, Tesosomoc, inventing history, in our second case, Uluacan, exhuming history, but here history was alive. I mean, history was still alive, still there, and we had to deal with it and to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, celebrate it, protect it, and create with it. So the first thing that was done, not by us, but by the city, uh, was to have an enormous water treatment plant this is one, another one was built, and a clean water was given back to this whole ag agricultural lagoon area. The second thing that they did was to, to excavate again and to re-establish the levels of water. In other words, a series of hydraulic engineering uh, activities. Uh, for instance, these locks were were designed, these very simple locks, and you can see kind of third world locks, you know, uh, which which very simple with a little motor, they, they, are, they control the water, the water levels, and at the end, 
what they accomplished was the recovery of about 800 hectares of agricultural land uh, back into, into production. Uh, this is the Chinampa. The Chinampa is a platform or island built on the lake with reefs and then with mud and then established or uh, uh, grounded with uh, these trees which are vertical willows which are called awejotes. Uh, it's a strict willow which ties together the whole island. This, uh, this invention, which provided uh, an enormous fertility, provided the Aztecs with as much as three crops per year. That provided them in a very intensive way. So that provided them the possibility of conquering other areas of Mesoamerica or uh, uh, constructing and building their, their, their center of the city. Okay, when we started to design the land, this is the historical part. This is the new freeway which r runs around Mexico City. And uh, uh, we, we, we encountered a very flat, a very uh, ordinary, without trees, landscape. Actually, a very ugly landscape, but with a magnificent surrounding. So the first thing we did was to establish important accesses to the sacred mountains of this cosmo cosmogony that existed way back uh, uh, in, the, in the history of Mexico City. So we did research also in relation to old painters, to um, a, a, a aerial photo photography of the 1930s and 40s and so on. So the first thing was to establish the park in relation to its territory. So we created a series of axes to mountains, to lakes, and so on. The, the second thing is we created a series of spaces, and this is the plan for the, for the park of Xochimilco. The park is related in three, actually three parks. The, what is called the ecological park, which is a uh, arboretum, demonstration, agricultural demonstration area, and recreational area with the lake. This is a new lake that was excavated. And then also here with a new flower market for the production and sale of the, 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 the production of plants and flowers from Xochimilco. And in the third case, also a uh, uh, sports park with a ser series of wetlands to capture water from the uh, uh, from the rain, let's say, from the drainage of the park. Uh, in other words, the, the park works as a cap capture area uh, from from all of the rain that that uh, falls on the park or on the freeway. The, the park has this entrance and then proceeds through a uh, paseo or stroll of flowers down to a, an embarcadero or a pier. And from there you embark yourself and you go to the historical er area. Something is wrong with, with this technology. Okay, the next one. Yes, thank you. Okay, this, this is the central part of the park, uh, the entrance, as you can see, and you can see here a series of aqueducts that are injecting the water, the treated water, down into the new lake. Uh, you see the forms of the, of, of the edge of the park, which are in, taken from the hydraulics of movement of water, as you can see here. And then you see also a, a, a series of wetlands or water bodies excavated out 
uh, and each one, as you can see, of different color. The color is related to different, different depths of, uh, of, of, of water and therefore establishing different types of plants and therefore establishing different types of habitat, uh, a bird habitat. No, it's not working anymore. The, the uh, okay. Well, uh, uh, you can see here, for instance, our relations and, and access to the mountains and re-establishing uh, uh, this historical landscape, but now from uh, Mexico City's most important uh, thoroughfare or, or, or circulation system, uh, the, the peripheral road. You see, you see in all the, the uh, Diego Rivera's and, and so on, painters and, 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 and photographs, you see this great expanse of water, trees in the foreground, or background, I mean, and then a, a relationship to this mountain, for instance, which is very important. And this uh, series of, uh, of, of, of aqueducts are then now injecting water into the lake system. Uh, here we worked, again, like I was telling you, with images such as Carlos Fuentes, which calls talks about uh, uh, the sunken mirror uh, or the the mirror obsidian mirror and then also the the, the, uh, the stone that floats or the trees that grow into into the the chinampa also this this uh, this tank, water tank, this, cre this uh, provides potable water because this is not drinkable water. You need also potable water for the various services of the park. And we created this, uh, this, uh, uh, this tower, this water tower, which uh, uh, is in the form of an obelisk uh, or uh, um, Archimedes screw, which was taken also from certain uh, paintings by, by, by Juan O'Gorman and, and, and other of the rest of uh, modern painters of Mexico. Could you, the, the next one, please. As you start then the paseo from, from the main plaza into the park and through the, the water bodies to, in order to get down to the, to the embarking, embarking place. That, next one, please. There, thank you. So, so you go through and then you find this uh, pergola and you proceed with a series of plantations or squares of flowers down into the park and you start to see the different formations of lakes. Next one, please. Yes. At the end of this procession, you get into the central plaza and down to the embarking place. And then you can see here a series of uh, uh, chinampas which were emerged from an excavated back on its side. Next, next one, please. Here, here they are. And we, we, we worked together with the engineers and changed the plan very many times, you know, and, and reestablished the concept uh, as we were digging, digging down into the possibilities of recovering these, these, these islands, these chinampas. Next one, please. Uh, in the didactic park or educational part of the park is this uh, arboretum which deals with plants from the central part of Mexico, from the high plateau. And you can also see uh, uh, back uh, many, many species of birds which come naturally come back to the, to the area. Next one, please. At the, at the entrance of the park, there's also the, a, a building. This building is a community center and a uh, interpretative center. And it has this uh, ramp to go up and to view the park from, from its uh, roof. It's like a platform of, uh, or mirador, 
to look out into the park. It has also this central, as you see, it's a square with a round central, central uh, courtyard or patio. Next one, please. You go up into the roof and you find out these uh, bleachers to sit and to look out to the magnificent landscape and, and also orientated specifically to the sunset. Uh, the, the, the round patio or courtyard is uh, coronated by these uh, uh, agave plants, which for me is the, is the symbol of the central part of Mexico. Next one, please. Uh, at the center, you see this, again, this black obsidian mirror, which takes advantage of the movement of the sun or the moon and traces its movement. You can see here the sliding sky, which goes up and then dissolves into the real sky uh, 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 and coronated by this uh, by these uh, uh, agave plants. It's the interior of the building with, with the, uh, playing with the strict square round and then a free form here and, and the location of some uh, uh, viewpoints or oculus out into the, into the landscape. Next one, please. In the other side of the street, as you remember, there's uh, the the uh, a plant and, and flower market. It's a, a, a plant and flower market of 2,000 stalls. So you can take your car in and actually bring your car and buy the plants and then go out. Uh, there are also service centers uh, with bathrooms. They, they sell places to eat and so on and so forth. And then there's this axis that takes you to a, a, a plaza where they bring vegetables on certain days. The relationship here, the metaphor here uh, of the roof, the repetition of the roof is related to uh, the production, the industrial production of plants with the green, with the green uh, houses. Next one, please. Uh, at the end also, there's another embarcadero, another embarking place where these are the traditional trajineras or flat bottom boats which take you out into this magnificent cultural and artificial landscape uh, which has now been recovered. Next one, please. Back into the landscape of dreams. Uh, uh, as you can see, this is one of the great, I mean, landscapes, in, in my opinion, landscapes in the world. Uh, created about the 10th or 11th century of this era. Next one, please. Well, here we are in another part of Mexico, in the central part of Mexico, Aguascalientes, and uh, uh, you don't have as deep history or as uh, uh, this, this, this confrontation with history, but we had a confrontation with reality, that is, the trash, the degradation of this uh, dam, and the construction of housing around this dam. So the authorities of Aguascalientes asked us to do a park around this dam and to re-establish the dam again. So, next one, please. So the idea was to create five parks in one, establishing first a park, a cultural park here, or a cultural center, a, then a recreational park in this place, a sports park on, on, in, relate to, in relation to the housing on top of here, and then an avenue to connect the fifth park as a uh, nursery for the city and a lookout point for the rest of the city. Uh, also here at the end, a, a natural or ecological park with this dry river. So uh, uh, next one, please. Uh, we, you know, we start to design the entrance of the park with this cultural center here. Uh, as you see, part 
urban design, part architecture, part environmental uh, 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 restoration. Uh, here, this first lake uh, acts as a cesspool, cleaning all of the all of the refuse and garbage that comes down from the rivers down into. And there's a sifting point here, and we took advantage of this sifting point to locate a bridge and a pedestrian bridge and a little cafeteria here. Then. You see the park is, is uh, uh, with, with concentrations of activity in specific points and then periods or transitions of naturalness uh, along these points of activity. At the end, we reestablish the curtain of the dam and the overspill um, uh, uh, place the overspill, uh, um, I don't know how to call it in English, the overspill, whatever, place, uh, is, is converted into a, uh, into a, a, a skating rink and, and is open air auditorium. Then to transform this area into a natural or ecological park. Next one, please. As you see the entrance to the park, again, the, the symbol or obelisk now with a water tank again to give uh, uh, to give water to to the to the all the facilities the park as you enter you find this kind of agora or plaza with cultural activities in one in each of these modules each of these modules are next one please uh, workshops for instance this 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 workshop is, is related to dancing, uh, to ballet dancing. Others are related to uh, music, to uh, painting and sculpture, to uh, teachers' at, uh, 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 adult education, computer, and so on. There are nine, nine of these modules in the entrance. And we wanted to work here with a, a lot of transparency in order to invite people to go into these shops, into these workshops. To, to come in and to look at people as they were uh, having these workshops. Next, next. So the, the, the second part or activity is, uh, again, like I told you, the bridge, which act, acts as a, a place to clean the, you can see here, for instance, this uh, net, in order to, to clean the, all the garbage and then to, to protect this large water body from, from the garbage. We, we then designed this, uh, this plaza and this, this, uh, this little cafeteria here for social activities. Next one, please. As you see, the, the social cafeteria then looks out into the large uh, water body or dam. And this dam looks down into the city in a, in a very beautiful manner. Uh, we work here with uh, uh, other forms uh, related more to the industrial character and modernity this, this city has. N next one, please. The transitional areas, as you can see, are uh, 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 places of savanna with uh, the, the, the typical uh, uh, mesquite trees which were pre-existing on the site. And they were uh, planted with uh, um, Italian, Italian uh, cypresses to have a contrast, as you can see, uh, on the horizontality of the savanna with the contrasting character of the verticality of the uh, 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 jun uh, these junipers. Next one, please. As you can see, at the end of the, uh, of the journey, then this is the dam. Uh, uh, the overspill area and you can see back into the park with all of these uh, uh, plants which relate to a very dry climate which is this part of the country savanna dry, dry savanna landscape uh, ne next one please and then at the end of the of the of the dam the curtain was uh, converted into a Again, a stroll 
a strolling place, a place to stroll, and then to have like, a, like an elongated pergola here with a, a lookout point back into the, into, the, into, the, into the lake and into the park. Next one, please. OK, uh, this, this park was uh, built very recent, this, this former park. Another project that uh, we worked uh, is, is this uh, uh, golf club entrance, uh, which is outside of Mexico City. When we were invited to do this uh, golf club, we were very preoccupied, very worried about the condition of this uh, golf club in the middle of this agrarian Mexican landscape. And um, we then looked at this, as, at this agrarian landscape and found uh, these marvelous stone walls which create these platforms and, and mark, mark the, the landscape. Uh, next one, please. So we started to work with these uh, uh, magnificent uh, stone walls uh, in order to cover or to hide the, 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 uh, the, the golf course and to tie uh, all of this uh, landscape back into its character. Uh, we then work with a module here of one meter, a vertical module of one meter in topography. So every time the topography changed one meter, we would, we would then again create this type of, of stair. Uh, as you can see, this is a horizontal that creates a very interesting horizontality and movement of the wall into the landscape. Uh, uh, next one, please. As you turn around, then we created this plaza coming into the, into the golf club or, or development. Uh, we wanted to have a transition from the, from the highway into the development. And uh, we created this plaza uh, with this water, water feature here in the center, a, a absolutely a mineral plaza a stone plaza with water. Next one, please. You see the, the character of these stones. These, these stones were uh, brought into the, into, the, into the project from the excavation of the golf course. And we, we used them, we moved them with, uh, with cranes, and we moved them with, with uh, a, a big trucks, very large trucks, mining trucks. Next one, please. So as soon as you get out of the plaza, then you start to discover the, uh, the development. And then get down, you see the, finally the golf course, how it looked, how it was excavated down. And then this uh, road, which takes you down to the, to the clubhouse. Next one, please. The clubhouse, we did not design it, but we coordinated it. And then we designed this uh, lake together uh, I mean, in coordination with the golf course architect. And we also designed this dam and this waterfall to create the steps coming down into the, into the clubhouse. Next one, please. And uh, we also uh, uh, were very interested in designing a uh, special uh, tennis court. It, again, putting this court down and creating a series of berms around it in order to tie, tie it together again with these walls creating a, a, an intimate series of spaces around the, the, the pool. Next one, please. In this same town, uh, you can see the character of the town. It's a magnificent town with a 16th century church and some of the best murals from the 16th century, which is a depiction of paradise. This, this In this town, uh, next one please, we, uh, I, I had designed with my, for my family a, a, a retreat or a weekend house. Uh, this weekend house, uh, as you enter, you pass into an old orchard, and the house, there's the kitchen, the dining room, the living room, and the bedrooms. 
Each bedroom has its own little courtyard, as you can see, or patio. And the house revolves around this central patio. So for me, I wanted to create in this house a relationship to the, to the, to the garden. It is a garden with a house, not a house with a garden. Next one, please. A, as you go, the, the, of course, the central feature of the house is this garden. And this is the, the, uh, the dining room, which is outside. There's no windows. And the living room, which is also outside. There's a fireplace to light uh, at night and to warm yourself up. And then when it's very cold, then you get into your bedroom. Next one, please. The corridor, then the, the, the bedrooms are aligned in, in a convent or monastery fashion. And they revolve, again, around this, uh, this, this the central path. The stone here is set on mud. And it percolates water into the trees. And then the remaining water is captured in this uh, a little pool. And again, when it's full, we send it under the house to the orchard. And then it's fil filtered down into a cesspool back into the ground. Next one, please. You can see here the, the character of the patio with these guava trees and coffee, mangoes, etc., etc. Next one, please. Uh, the back part of the house, we built some uh, horse barns. And uh, the roof of the house, which uh, gives you an idea of its character. Next one, please. We uh, have also worked in, in, in other parts of the country. This, is one, this project is in Monterrey, Mexico, in the north part of the country, the desert part of the country. We were asked here to design a uh, part of a new town, a, a city within a city, and, and we were asked to design the, the town center. So you can see here the town center related to a series of buildings which were creating spaces, alamedas, the typical alamedas, and then in a central garden, let's say, transition to other buildings, a church, and so on. Uh, unfortunately, this, this, this project was never built. Uh, it was only partly built. Next one, please. The entrance to the project was built. We created, uh, uh, we wanted to create a, a symbol for this enormous development. Uh, and we created, again, a fountain capturing water uh, from the, when it rains, from the desert, let's say. And we uh, recovered many of these uh, uh, yucas and also many types of landscape, I mean, uh, 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 serified plants, put them on top of this, of this symbol. This, this, this is the symbol, like a pointer into the, into the, into the city. It was never finished. It was for some, for political reasons, uh, uh, this, this uh, development just frozen. And then the governor of, of the state was kicked out and the whole thing was just stopped. Very typical of our countries. Next one, please. Uh, you can see in the background these magnificent mountains of Monterrey and, and the recovered yucas which were put on a grid. And then all of these cacti were, was recovered from the bulldozers and then put on top of this element, which is just uh, filled in with fill, the fill which was taken from the excavation of the streets, of the avenues. Next one, please. We were also asked to do model little plazas for various developments. And working with, this was the first time we were really working with a desert uh, landscape. Uh, very low maintenance 
and the use of recovered trees. Next one, please. So this was the idea of the, these little plazas. Next one. Again. Next one, please. Uh, the use of the of the interior streets into the into the plazas, capturing the water and then recycling it into these uh, areas of of water retention. Next one, please. Okay, the final project. Uh, this project uh, is in Paquimé, uh, again the northern part of Mexico, in Chihuahua. And uh, the, uh, the, the National Institute of Anthropology asked us to do a uh, uh, site museum in this uh, uh, great uh, city or archaeological site. Uh, Paquimé is the center of the uh, culture of the southwest of the U.S. and the north of Mexico. This is where the... Uh, Pueblo culture of, our, of architecture was sprung up, sprang, sprang or, or came out. Uh, Paquimé was a city, a living city, a, a actual city with its plaza, its market, and so on, as well as a ceremonial city, as a ceremonial city. What is interesting here was the, the, the uh, integration of a real city with capturing water, capturing, creating architecture and high density architecture with a, 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 a uh, ceremonial city, a religious city. Next one, please. As you can see here, the architecture in this model, uh, they had living animals here, they captured water, they recycled water, they had cisterns under the buildings and also they create a very sophisticated type of of pottery the pottery that's still used and sold in santa fe or albuquerque well that's where it all sprang in, in paquimé and there's a, a town nearby where they still produce this pottery and they sell it in santa fe next next time next slide so uh, uh, the the challenge here was to create a uh, a museum, a building, without intruding into the integrity of this very sacred landscape. Uh, so we came with the idea of sinking the building down halfway into the landscape and then permitting the desert to come to the, its edge and actually getting on top of it and then going down again. And, and we created a series of courtyards because we didn't want to do a subterranean building. We didn't want to do a, a building completely subterranean. We wanted to do a building create, related to, to sun and to different spaces. So each of these uh, halls of exhibit is related to an important courtyard. For instance, this is the first courtyard, a round courtyard. The second courtyard, which is a dry river, riverbed, which takes out and views out into the desert. And then a third courtyard, which is a triangle related to the sierras. And the central courtyard related to the water coming down from the sierras. Next one, please. So this is the building as it looks. As you approach it and you see the desert has started to, to, to come up and you can barely see the, the building and you eventually discover, discover it. Uh, we only had certain points or, or corners to stick out and create these, uh, these, these uh, changes of sun and, and shadow. Next one, please. Uh, as you come down into the entrance of the plaza, entry plaza, go down and you find the, the, the lobby, the entrance to the, to the museum. <coughs> Next one, please. But you can go also up on top of the museum into this platform to view out 
the magnificent uh, landscape, landscape out to the, uh, to the desert. You can see for 40, 50 miles on this direction uh, without a single uh, uh, house or whatever, construction. A, a, great, a great landscape out to the, to the Sierras of Chihuahua. Next, next one, please. Uh, as you come up, uh, uh, and you, as you come down from the from the roof, down into the central courtyard, you find this courtyard, which is related again, like I was telling you, to the uh, water that comes down from the mountains. Uh, we created this pergola with the space to have activities of representation, like uh, storytelling or a concert or what have you. Uh, in relation to uh, possibilities to use the museum like that. Next one, please. Uh, and then, as you come from this, uh, this, this pergola area, uh, we wanted to work with the edges of the sun and uh, shadow, which uh, here in this part of the desert uh, is, is very intense, very, very interesting. The, the, the light, the, the harshness of the light, but then you can work the quality of the light. Uh, we work here uh, uh, starting to, to sift the light into the interior in the cafeteria of the museum. Next one, please. And then the uh, uh, dark halls of exhibit. Uh, we did not uh, do the of course, the, the exhibit design was done by, by a Mexican architect uh, and, and uh, we worked together, uh, but what actually he, he designed all of the exhibits. Uh, ne next one, please. But again, like I was telling you, each hall is related to a specific uh, courtyard. For instance, in this hall, which is the everyday uh, hall, what is called the quotidian uh, manufacturing hall, uh, they represent here materials which were used for pottery, for construction, for beads, for uh, uh, many types of uh, instruments and so on. So this, there's a very beautiful uh, metaphor here with this materiality. Next one, please. And, and finally, uh, uh, this other hall related uh, to the dry riverbed, which goes out into this observation point. And then there's this connection between the regional landscape and the interior of the museum. Oh, thank you very much. Mm.